Hey guys, this is Clint Johnson. I'm a volunteer with the Ozark Mission Project and we're gonna talk about painting today. So uh, these guidelines, kind of do's and don'ts, could apply to an outdoor painting project, indoor painting project, deck staining, any sort of painting that you're gonna do with a neighbor. Uh, most of these things should apply. So the, the first thing that we're gonna be aware of is one of John Wesley's uh, kind of tenets of, of life is to above all do no harm. Uh, so that, that sounds kind of weird in a, in a ministry setting, uh, we're doing mission work. Um, so what does that mean? So we're, we're going to do work for a neighbor to, to help them do a task. Uh, how could we do harm? So in a painting scenario, if we do a great job painting the house, but we get uh, paint on the driveway, paint on their carpet, if we do damage while we're there doing the job, if, if we do good, we have done harm. So that's, that's most of what we're going to talk about today is how to do no harm and do a really good job for a neighbor in a painting project. So the, the first tool uh, that we're going to need is what I'm standing on here. Um, so this is a drop cloth. This happens to be a plastic drop cloth. You may use a cloth, uh, actual canvas drop cloth or a paper drop cloth. Um, anything will work. Anything that your construction coordinator gives to you will be fine. Just something to cover the area uh, that you're painting to catch any spills. Uh, so you are going to have spills, you are going to have drips, that is part of painting, it is going to happen, you just need to be prepared to deal with that. Um, we always use latex paint at OMP, um, easily cleaned up with water before the paint dries, that's the key. You get to get to it and get it cleaned up and get it gone before the paint dries. After that, it's kind of there. Um, so definitely use drop cloths. What we, we put drop cloths on, so here, this is where we're going to be um, kind of pouring our paint and, and handling it. So we definitely need to drop cloth here. Um, it, over any bushes or anything, um, outdoors are going to need to drop cloth on. So if we have outdoor furniture, chairs or something, we might, might want to move those. Be sure you maybe take a picture of the area. Remember where these things came from so we can move back afterward. Um, indoors, certainly going to use drop cloths. We don't want painted carpet or anything like that. Um, another good thing, masking tape. There, masking tape. If there's corners or something you don't want paint on, be sure to put masking tape on it before you begin. Um, I can promise you, no matter how good of a painter you are, you're better with masking tape, so use it. Uh, so some of the tools that we're gonna need, uh, so what I've got here uh, right in front of me, uh, these are the things that the uh, family group themselves, the, the adult camper is gonna provide. So we got uh, a hammer to reseal the paint cans, to open paint cans, so a flat blade screwdriver would work fine, or one of these uh, church keys. Uh, we'll open a paint can just fine. We've got a, a bristle brush, so we, we need this because you may be doing cleanup jobs rather than painting or construction at OMP, but also really handy for, uh, say, if we spilled some, some paint on this concrete to clean it up before it dries, so that's, that's good. Uh, we've got some just old rags, uh, so everything here is going to be consumable. So these are things that uh, you're, you're assuming you're going to throw away when you're done with the job. So old rags. A Ziploc bag, we'll cover that uh, in the next video, so stay tuned for that. Some solo cups. So these are handy for pouring your paint into. So uh, especially using, using a brush, doing trim work, um, being able to carry a small amount of paint. The smaller amount of paint you're carrying, the smaller spill you're going to have when you eventually spill one of these. So we don't want to be carrying around a whole gallon of paint and uh, different brushes out of it. So uh, these solo cups this size work really well. And a paintbrush. So we want every camper to bring a, a two or three inch paintbrush, something, something like this. Um, so when you go buy these at a hardware store, you need to be paying, you know, five to ten bucks for a paintbrush. Don't get the cheapest thing out there. You don't want to get a fifty dollar paintbrush either, because we're going to consider these disposable items. So we may or may not be able to bring this home with us at the end of camp. So don't spend too much on paintbrushes. Um, Moving this way, these are things that are gonna be supplied by OMP, so supplied by your construction coordinator. We've got roller covers. We don't want these back, so these are consumable items. So this is not something that uh, we are worried about cleaning at the end of the, end of the job. Uh, we will show you how to store uh, the rollers and the brushes in these Ziploc bags uh, for, for uh, keeping overnight, but don't feel like you have to clean this and give it back to your tool coordinator at the end of the week. Um, these tray liners, the same thing. So we can, you know, pour the paint out um, and then put the same color paint back in it the next day. That's perfectly fine. We don't want these back at the at the end of the week. So these are going to be disposable when the job is finally done. 
Moving over here, these are things that are maybe not consumable. Um, these uh, these roller trays. So it's really important to have these liners in these trays. Um, the liners are much easier to deal with than trying to clean this tray out. Uh, so we, we don't want to be throwing these metal, nice metal trays away at the end of camp. So definitely use, use a good liner. Uh, our paint, of course, uh, something to stir with. So you should be, at, be getting a, a stick with your paint and roller, and you may get an extension depending on the job you're doing, and a ubiquitous five-gallon bucket for OMP. So that's going to be pretty important to keep a bucket of water around for when, not if, but when you have any spills. Um, our garden hose, you, you may or may not be issued a garden hose from the tool trailer, but uh, one of the first things I would ask the neighbor, especially if you're doing an outside painting project, is where's your, where's your outdoor hose? Can we... Um, can we go ahead and get a hose hooked up just in case we have a spill? Um, go ahead and take care of that before you ever start painting. So the way that we open a bucket of paint, we'll take a screwdriver. And we will pry up the lid very carefully. Remember that whenever we're done doing whatever we're gonna do with this, bucket of paint we're gonna secure the lid back by tapping around the rim with a hammer so a lot of our paint spills happen when somebody sets the lid on there and it looks like that lid's secure and it's not so be sure if you put it back on put it back on securely and we've already stirred this paint but we're gonna want to stir until we see a consistent color so if you're stirring down to the bottom bring it up and seeing different colors coming up, that means you need to keep stirring. So be sure that you've got it completely stirred up. So if we're going to do some work with our roller, we're gonna pour some paint into our tray. We don't wanna fill that tray completely up, but pour enough that we can work with it. We're gonna clean up our drips. Secure lid back down. Another way that we often get spills is by kicking our containers of paint. So be sure to sit that in a spot that is not going to see a whole lot of traffic of people moving back and forth. The other way that we're going to get a whole lot of spills is by loading these rollers up and you'll see people going too fast with the roller. Just a nice slow roll to get that roller loaded up. No drips and ready to paint. Hey guys, I'm Sarah and I'm a volunteer with Ozark Mission Project. I'm going to talk a little bit about overhead painting safety. The number one thing with overhead painting is always wearing your safety glasses. Wearing your safety glasses is going to prevent two things. The first thing that wearing your safety glasses is going to prevent is paint chips getting in your eye when you're scraping old paint off. When you're scraping old paint off and you're scraping over your head, all those paint flakes are going to chip right back off onto you and they're going to rain down. You want to make sure that they're not going to hit your eyes by wearing your safety glasses. The second thing that your safety glasses are going to help prevent are paint drips getting into your eye. Now before you even start painting, a good way to prevent excess paint drips is by wiping off any excess paint off of your roller and off of your brush into your paint tray or paint cup before you even start painting. But wearing your safety glasses is going to prevent any excess paint from dripping overhead while you're painting back into your eyes. So remember, avoid paint chips and paint drips by wearing your safety glasses. Thanks, guys. Hey, how are you? We're here to talk about ladder safety. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a video about ladder safety. Uh, so a couple things you need to know about using a ladder. The first rule is how to hold the ladder or how to set it up. You want to make sure the ladder is set up so that it's on level ground so that we don't have a bunch of craziness down there. Don't set it up on the side of a boulder and think it's going to work. And, and if you think, oh, it'll hold for just long enough, it won't. It'll hold just long enough to drop you on your head. So don't do that. Set the ladder up on solid ground or on flat, flat ground, nice and straight. 
even with the wall, and you want to set it up so that you have a holder, this is a two-person job, your holder will have their feet right here at the end of the ladder, and the ladder should be at an angle where they can stand straight and put their hands out like this and hold it and make jokes about your shoes. Um, make sure the holder at all times is holding it and make sure it doesn't go sideways. That's the biggest thing, side to side. Uh, don't ever go above the last couple of steps on the ladder. Don't stand up on that top step. You'll fall off. Go up to where you have two or three rungs above you still. If you need to go higher than that, get a taller ladder. All right, guys, so we're at the end of the day. Got our painting project uh, completed, and now it's time to clean up. So remember our friendly bucket of water. The first step is to throw our brush and roller in. So remember that uh, the brush and the roller, they are consumable after the job is completely done. Um, probably gonna throw these things away, but we're at the end of the day and we're coming back tomorrow. We can take our brush with some of the paint knocked off in a Ziploc bag with a little bit of paint in it, as well as our roller cover. going in the bag and this can stay overnight just fine not dry out so in general we have an overall world OMP we don't want anybody washing paint brushes at the neighbor's house uh, we, we've had too many instances where messes have been made Remember, do no harm uh, so we want to avoid that some of our churches will allow us to wash uh, paint brushes at the church, at the home church, at the host church, uh, some of them won't. So it just depends on whatever your construction coordinator tells you. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to wash a brush if you need to do that after you've gotten permission to wash in that place. So remember, we're not washing brushes at neighbor's houses and only at churches if we've got permission to. Um, the other thing, these tray liners, um, they can they can dry it overnight. You can put fresh paint in them the next day, no problem. At the end of the project, those are disposable, so we don't want those back. So if we do need to uh, clean our brush, maybe to change colors at a job, we're going to turn on some low pressure water and simply run that vertically through the brush, kind of from the ends towards the handle until we don't see color coming out of the brush anymore. And it does take a while. Uh, this will take a couple minutes of kind of massaging this brush and getting all the color out. And you can see why we don't, in a, in a general rule, want paint brushes uh, washed. So we'd rather we'd rather these be disposable items if we can if we can help it. So only wash your paint brushes at churches if you've got permission to do so. Thanks for joining me. All right, today I'm going to show you how to use two simple tools that will make working with wood a lot easier. So the first is a ramp jig. Now this is a simple tool. It's just a two foot section of two by four with a two by four square screwed onto the end of it. How you use this is we have a uh, already uh, leveled section of ramp here. And you put just like this and you put your level on top. And when your bubble level shows you level, your, your level, and that means that your ramp is at the perfect level and it's not too steep that it's going to be a roller coaster ride and it's not going to be so shallow that it'll be a ramp to never land. Now, to make this square pipe, this 2x4 on the end, we're going to use a speed square to make straight lines. Now, I know it's a triangle, but it's a speed square. So, when you use a speed square, make sure you stick the edge all the way against the board. If you have it like this, you're not going to be square. And instead, you make triangles just like the speed square, and that's what you're trying to prevent. So push it all the way up against there, and you make a straight line. Simple as that. Two more things about the ladder. One, uh, we don't go up on the roofs of any buildings at OMP. If they want you to go on the roof, call your college staffer. You are not going up on that roof. Hard, fast rule. Don't do it. Second thing is tools. Any tools. In this case, a tiny little paint roller without a roller on it. Um, Let's imagine I've been painting and I go, I've got to set this thing down for a minute, right? So you set it down and you go about your life and then you forget it's up there and you come back to move the ladder. 
Well, the next thing that happens is whatever tool you set up there falls on top of your head or somebody else's head, and you can really get hurt. Sometimes it's a drill with a, a drill bit on it. Um, that's not going to feel good. So never put any tools on the ladder. This is not a shelf. Um, a lot of people do get injured when you forget about that tool up there. It may seem silly, but it's actually kind of really important. So don't do that. Thanks. Be safe. Hello, I'm Hank Godwin, and we're going to talk a little bit about saw safety or skill saw specifically uh, safety. First, number one thing, um, safety glasses. These are appropriate safety glasses for somebody like me that can't see without them. But you could do this, but usually I just wear them like that. And but always wear safety glasses. The second thing I'd say about safety, don't use these. I have uh, recently had my impact wrench screw the fingers up on these to the point where it, it captures uh, the, 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 the glove and almost tears it off my hand. Same thing can happen on a saw. The other thing, all you're going to need for a cut, uh, this is a speed square and a pencil. Make sure you line it up right. The only other safety thing that you need to work about is when you do this, put your hand or have somebody hold it on the stable side of it. Let this piece drop. If Don't let anybody hold or pull up on this. If they're, if they're gonna be down, just let, them, let it drop into their hand because this is how you'll get a kickback. Safety. Thank you. Hey, safety tip number two, wasp spray. Or four, or ten. I don't know what order you're watching these videos in. <clears throat> wasp spray. Stuff's pretty easy. You just read the instructions. There are a couple things to remember though. One, it sprays out about 15 feet. Wasps are angry, mean creatures that will stab you repeatedly. Stay the 15 feet away. Don't get closer. Two, shake the can a lot, pop the top off, and you spray the nest, not the wasps. When those wasps are flying around and you're trying to like use up your little bit of spray to like sharpshoot them, sniper them out of the air, it's not gonna work. Spray the nest, stand away, spray the nest, do a good spray, and don't stand in the wind where it's gonna get you in the face. I almost got myself there, so don't do that. Uh, Soak the nest and then walk away. Let the wasps come back to the nest and they will get in there, have a great time, and die. So that's it about wasp spray. Be safe. Don't be stupid. One of the, my greatest fears is getting that phone call during an OMP camp that a camper has cut a water line or, in this particular case, some uh, low voltage for lighting or a uh, sprinkler system. So we're going to talk about how far should you sink your post in uh, for a wheelchair ramp or for a porch or something. Number one thing that you got to worry about is that porch or that wheelchair ramp sinking because of the mud or whatever. So for us at OMP, it's really difficult for us to call 811 or what are the local service to go out and identify where the utilities are, like the water or the gas lines or things like that prior to camp because they usually won't be able to get out there in time. So we have a rule and that is to um, only bury the, the post no more than eight inches and preferably we'd love for you just to sit it on top of the solid piece of, of, um, of rock like this or, or a more appropriate would be a 12 by 12 paver that's like two inches thick. It does not take very much for something, these weapons of mass destruction like a Pocto digger or a shovel or a Maddox to cut through something like this or even because of the velocity that you, you're digging with, it will cut through PVC or even do damage to a metal pipe. I prefer to see campers even use the claw hammer part of the, of the hammer, uh, the claw part to dig out the eight inches that they need. So remember, eight inches, that's about all you need would be from here to here in the ground and try and not to hit anything that will cause damage and cause a lot more destruction to the, to the neighbor. Always do no harm.